the appointment came after 11 weeks of political wrangling among the jigsaw of political parties that emerged in March elections. Conti, a 53-year-old law professor with no political experience, was nominated by Matteo Salvini of the far-right league and Luigi Di Meo of the anti-establishment five-star movement. The two populist parties secured the most votes in the March 4 election. But voters did not return a majority to any single party, and neither politician would concede the top job to the other. Conti said that he supported center-left political ideals when he joined the Five Star Movement during the recent election. He was mentioned as a potential public administration minister in the event that the Five Star Movement won a clear majority. Conti's nomination was briefly called into question after media reports surfaced accusing him of embellishing parts of his curriculum vitae. Efforts to reach Conti for comment were unsuccessful. He studied in the United Kingdom and United States, according to his resume, where he perfected his English in order to teach international law. The Five Star Movement rejected accusations that Conti embellished his qualifications. There's no reference in his CV to master's or other university titles, but the simple and accurate description of his work as a scholar and university professor, the movement said in a post on its official blog. Work experience scrutinized in one part of his resume, Conti says he perfected and updated his studies at New York University from 2008 to 2012. An NYU spokeswoman said in a statement that university records did not indicate Conti was a student or ever had an appointment as a faculty member. The school said that even though Conti had no official status at NYU, he was granted permission to conduct research in the NYU Law Library between 2008 and 2014, and he invited an NYU law professor to serve on the board of an Italian law journal. Conti also claimed he taught at the University of Malta in the summer of 1997 for the International Course of Study entitled, European Contract and Banking Law. The University of Malta told News Total that it has no record of Giuseppe Conti ever forming part of the resident academic staff. However this does not exclude that he may have been involved in lecturing duties during short courses organized in the summer of 1997 by the now defunct Foundation for International Studies, FIS, which was a separate entity that worked in close collaboration with the University of Malta, a spokesman for the university said. And some academics from the Faculty of Law seem to remember him being one of the lecturers during this short course, the spokesman added. Conti also said he conducted scientific research in 2000 at the Sorbonne in Paris. A university spokesman said in a statement to News Total that after internal inquiries at the Sorbonne School of Law, the Sorbonne Doctorate School of Law and the Direction of International Relations, the University Paris 1 Pantheon Sorbonne cannot confirm that Mr. Conti has studied at our university that summer. Nevertheless, he could have come to visit some colleagues in a laboratory without informing our services, he added. Conti also said he conducted studies at Yale University and Duquesne University in the U.S. for three months in the fall of 1992 to further his study of the North American contract law. Yale said it would perform a thorough check of the records and would not comment further until the checks were complete. Duquesne University confirmed Conti was at the university in the early 1990s as part of an affiliation with the Villa Nazareth Program, a cultural institution in Rome founded by Domenico Cardinal Tardini, that fostered international student exchanges. The program enabled students from Rome to attend graduate programs at Duquesne University and undergraduates from Duquesne to attend classes at Villa Nazareth. Duquesne said Conti was not enrolled as a student but he was engaged in legal research and in advancing the work of our affiliation with Villa Nazareth, working on legal issues related to a charitable trust that funded the program, and helping select the program's participants, the school said. Apparently, the accusations were not enough to sideline him. Promises of Change Conti was born in the southern region of Puglia and lives in Florence where he teaches civil law at the University of Florence. He is separated from his wife with whom he has a 10-year-old son, according to a biography presented by the Five Star Movement provided to the press. After a 90-minute meeting Wednesday with Mattarella behind closed doors, 
Conti accepted the post with reservations. He asked for time to formulate the final list of his cabinet members, which Mattarella will have to approve before it faces votes in Italy's upper and lower houses of parliament. After the meeting, Conti addressed reporters. He emphasized the importance of Italy remaining in the European Union and promised that his would be a government of change. I will be the defense attorney for all Italians, he said, echoing populist sentiments often heard by the five-star movement politicians during the campaign. Speaking to Italian media after Conti's confirmation, Salvini, leader of the League, mentioned the name of Paolo Savona as the new government's economic minister, a crucial posting. Savona is an economist well known for his skeptical views of Europe. The Italian national interest comes before everything else, Salvini said, calling to mind his Italy first mantra during the campaign. Those who oppose Conti and the League Five Star Movement Coalition cite a 58 page contract the two leaders signed prior to naming Conti. In the dossier, they outlined an ambitious spending package but did not provide concrete plans to pay for it. Vincenzo Boccia, the head of Italy's main industrial lobby, expressed concern about the economic stability of the plan at a conference in Rome on Wednesday. Debt remains our enemy, he said, according to Reuters. After Conti accepted his new job at the presidential palace, Italian media broadcast footage of him refusing a state-provided limousine. Instead, he took a city taxi to his first official engagement with the president of the lower house of deputies in central Rome. It was a simple gesture, no doubt meant to send an important message.